On September the 1st, the Vatican implemented a new financial investment policy stating that Holy See investments cannot contradict Catholic teaching. Policy stipulates that Vatican investments should be aligned with the teachings of the Catholic Church, with specific exclusions for financial investments which contradict its fundamental principles, such as the sanctity of life or the dignity of the human being or the common good. In order to find out more about Pope Francis's reform of Vatican finances and the importance of these new changes, we spoke to Father Christian Mendoza, professor at the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross in Rome, who teaches on the financial dimensions of the Church. Father Guerrero, the Prefect of the Secretariat for the Economy, announced that now the Vatican will have this new policy investment that at the end is like taking into consideration where the investments are done. This is happening in many other realities and also other states are investing a lot in sustainability, ecology and governance which means that the investments should have a very positive impact in these fields. Now, the Vatican, when they decide to do this, what they say is that basically they will not invest in anything that is against church teaching, like um, abortion or contraception, or maybe weapons and things that could maybe give revenue, but are against this idea of development. The guidelines say that the investments of the Holy See and related entities should aim to contribute to a more just and sustainable world and generate sufficient return in a sustainable way. We asked Father Christian Mendoza to help us understand better how the temporal goods of the Church are handled by the Holy See. Usually what happens is that the temporal goods that handle to the Holy See are very limited. You know that the Holy See receives money from especially the museums and also some donations that they get. What happens now is that they are trying to have more transparency and a better organization of the money they have. And this is very positive because they're very attentive to the few resources they have. If you consider the wealth of the Vatican to the wealth of just one of the big Catholic university in America, you would know that one big Catholic university, like the University of Notre Dame, has more money in their endowment than the Vatican would have in their financial endowment. That's why it is true that in the past, what happened is that the administration of these temporal goods in the Vatican were done, as always, like in a more familiar way. And now, with all these reform, what they're getting is to make it more professional. Find out more about the history of how the church makes investments and organizes its finances. We spoke to Michael Severance, director of the Instituto Acton, the Roman chapter of the Acton Institute, an international think tank focused on promoting a free and virtuous society. For most of us, it's a no-brainer that the church, in terms of its investments, has to be um, consistent with its fundamental ethical principles drawn up in the tradition of the Catholic social magisterium. Everything goes back to Catholic social teaching. You know, the Catholic social teaching tradition starts with a, a praise of private property. It was um, Leo XIII in the late um, 19th century, and Ishim Brigham Navarre defended private property. Private property is the whole basis of market activity. Um, private property, in the literal sense, um, is very much uh, supported and invested in by the Vatican itself. It has over 5,000 real estate properties. Under these reforms, Michael Severance explains, investments will be made through APSA, the Holy See's treasury and sovereign wealth manager, and overseen by an ethics committee of four financial professionals, headed by Cardinal Kevin Farrell. So what the um, Vatican is doing today under the guidance of Pope Francis and under the prefect of the Secretary of the Economy, Father Juan Antonio Guerrero, they are tightening up loose reins. And I don't mean reins in the sense of horses' reins. I mean reins in the sense of fiefdoms or small little kingdoms or principalities. So the dicasteries over the years have their own reserve funds and had had, had um, sometimes privileged access to invest their funds under their own discretion with some oversight within APSA and the apostolic administration that, that oversees investment properties. But now the, the Pope is really 
bringing in these loose reins, these loose kingdoms into one centralized um, oversight community that is now uh, steered by Cardinal Kevin Farrell, the Irish American, and four lay professionals in the investment world. And <clears throat> this is perfectly in line also with Catholic social tradition to and generally promote prudence and temperance in terms of our economic activities, to not be caught by the bright lights of high profit, but to remain sustainable in our activities. This new policy, which continues Pope Francis' reform of Vatican finances, has gone into effect as of September the 1st. There will be a one-year grace period for Vatican entities to divest of existing investments not in conformity with these new policies.